Allen, and welcome to the December 3rd regular meeting of the uh, Select Board for Walpole. As we uh, always do, it's after our posted time at 7 o'clock. Let's stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so our first appointment this evening at 7 o'clock is with uh, Chief Carmichael for the quarterly update. Chief? Good evening. Passed out the packets for you. First, a um, few things I'd like to talk about personnel. Dispatchers. Um, we have two new dispatchers that started, John King who is, um, has two years experience with the Rentham Public Safety Dispatching, and uh, Walpole resident Kevin Quinn, um, Walpole High School graduate uh, who got his criminal justice degree at Westfield State. Both are doing great, uh, still involved in training at this point, um, but they are uh, moving quite along uh, well with the um, combined police and fire dispatching. Officers um, Patrick Baker, William Mitchell, and Richard Ordway each of them um, are going to be, uh, well, actually, Pat Baker and William Mitchell are both in the Police Academy right now, Transit Police Academy in Quincy, and Richard Ordway will be going into the Reading Police Academy in January, uh, where they'll be for six months. Uh, the police exam we had this past quarter, we had 200 candidates come out, and so we have a, a established list for upcoming um, hires for the police department in the future, uh, and some great candidates on there. We're really happy about that. The, uh, just yesterday, we had the assessment center for deputy chief. We had five candidates, internal candidates, participate in this process. We have not gotten the results yet, um, but when we do, we will be in contact with the board. I want to mention some commendations. Um, I know I like to mention some of the good things the officers do over uh, each quarter. Uh, we had a series of them this past quarter. Uh, the first being Ian Toland, uh, who was involved with um, a serial bank robbery suspect um, and uh, both uh, multi-state Rhode Island and Massachusetts robberies uh, and some in the area. We uh, ultimately, uh, this individual is identified as somebody that was living in Walpole and um, Detective Toland at the time, now Sergeant, um, helped execute, uh, write and execute the search warrants. Uh, that went into place in order to identify this person, uh, establish evidence, and then uh, bring this person um, in under arrest. They actually got him at a uh, casino in Massachusetts. Uh, but just a great job. They actually recognized Ian down at one of their award ceremonies recently. Uh, Rich Haber, who, um, he, a couple different incidents, one where a uh, victim had cut themselves um, uh, and was, was bleeding profusely. Um, Officer Haber was able to um, apply a tourniquet and help uh, that person. And then another individual that had fell into an asphalt hopper, um, and Officer Haber was able to um, administer uh, his AED and CPR at that time. Uh, he's had a series of these, so uh, Rich Haber has just um, really been really good uh, and professional with how he handles some of these situations. Justin Rohana, uh, one he received the AAA Traffic Safety Hero Award. Uh, for his efforts. Uh, if you remember, Justin's only been out of the academy for about six months, but he quickly um, got into traffic enforcement uh, and they recognized him uh, with the Traffic Safety Hero Award because of his efforts out there, which is um, really good for somebody who's uh, only been on the job for six months. He was also given a commendation um, for a robbery and stabbing situation where an individual uh, had left a, a business uh, and was approached stabbed a couple of times, uh, handcuffed to a steering wheel, uh, and almost, uh, if it wasn't for an Uber driver, um, could have died in that situation, uh, lost a lot of blood. Um, but Officer Rohana was the first one there, and he was able to uh, quickly, uh, you know, while also paying attention to his surroundings, was able to uh, uncuff that person, apply a tourniquet, and then um, get the um, paramedics, the fire department down to help out. So he did a great job with that also a very young officer. Uh, Detective Bethany was involved in a um, multi-state uh, human trafficking issue where it was a, a girl from Walpole who 
we ended up finding in Florida, uh, who had run away, got into a um, transient um, truck, and we were able to um, locate this person, and, and Taylor did it, worked on it all weekend until she found this girl, 16-year-old um, girl, and ultimately uh, used a ruse in order to get her to um, kind of come out of the hiding, and she was able to uh, call the authorities down there and take the person into custody. And then we had a couple situations um, with officers responding to Longview, who've just done a great job down there. Officer Janad, Slavin, Ben Ness, Bird, and O'Connor, just doing an amazing job working with the kids down there who we all know, you know, come from very difficult backgrounds. And, um, but, you know, they're Walpole kids that are in our community, and they just do such a great job reaching out to them. One of the things I mentioned in the report was our uh, outreach and uh, we did this basketball game with some of the kids down Longview. And while we had a lot of fun playing the game, the most rewarding thing for me was looking at the officers engage with the kids before and after the game, where I actually saw kids going up and hugging some of our, some of our officers and high-fiving them. And um, it just tells a lot, like, how much um, invested they are with that community. Um, so I'm very proud of them on how they handle that. And then Walpole PD, um, we got the AAA uh, Silver Award. We're going to go for the gold next year. But uh, that's for our, our uh, traffic safety efforts. Some of the, uh, we had Community Policing Week. We had um, a lot of different events, uh, sporting events we attended. We had a bicycle course down at Bird Park, uh, Longview Farm basketball, ride to school programs, and um, you know our typical stuff, our positive tickets. and. Now we even have uh, Tommy Hart and I went out and found a little girl helping shovel today. We have positive Walpole Police uh, winter hats, which are which should be a big hit. Um, some of the outreach, um, we did some outreach this past quarter with Junior Women's Club. Um, we did some Halloween safety with all the kids in school giving out the glow sticks. Uh, the, we did Alice protocol for our seniors. As you know, we've, we've hit the, uh, the schools now. Um, and we're pretty much up to date with all of the schools, uh, municipal offices, and, and we also did some stuff with the Council on Aging um, and our seniors to teach them, you know, what to do in the event of a, any type of critical incident that might take place uh, at the Senior Center. Uh, so a lot of good um, positive things. One thing I did also make note of, we've had some several pedestrian crashes. We've had seven uh, take place this quarter since September, which uh, is, is unusually high. Um, several of those, uh, some serious injuries where we've had crash reconstruction, uh, reconstructing the accident. Um, and we're really trying to uh, focus on some of these areas as far as enforcement, crosswalks especially. Uh, we started a new program called Cops at Stops where we have officers going out to bus stops. We've, we're following school buses. We are um, paying attention to uh, railroad crossings and kids trespassing on railroad tracks. Any of those areas where it's just added um, hazard, um, especially to our kids and, and pedestrians. And we're continuously, uh, we're focusing on that. Um, but for some reason, we are still having um, some crashes taking place. Uh, and, you know, either distracted driving or impaired driving uh, remains to be a problem. Uh, in fact, after we started this program, we had an individual last week passed a school bus uh, at actually passed three motor vehicles that were stopped, then the school bus that had its lights on and stop sign out, and then struck another vehicle head on. Um, and that person was under the influence of drugs at the time, uh, including marijuana and having an open container. So we're trying to do uh, that enforcement side, trying to do some education side as far as um, understanding the dangers of impaired driving, uh, distracted driving. Uh, and hopefully, uh, as we keep doing this, it will, it'll catch on. The um, mental health issues com continue to be one of our most significant public safety issues. Um, in 2017, we had 168. 2018, we had 205. And this year, we're, gonna, we're on pace to be, uh, break 300 mental health calls. Uh, and these are any type of uh, you know, suicide, suicidal ideation. Uh, section 12, Section 35 type calls, which are involuntary mental health or involuntary drug commitments. Um, they are increasing, they're continuing to increase. We have now trained the um, three quarters of the police department in crisis intervention training. 
uh, and that's a week-long uh, training for officers to be able to identify and recognize mental health issues and then also um, integrate some type of communication with uh, that individual do an assessment and and tactics on how to you know use proper force and uh, when when the person um, has to involuntary go to the hospital and that kind of thing uh, we're trying to focus on dealing with those underlying issues and sometimes um, our response to these is a result of a crime so we're trying to also divert um, people that are in a mental health crisis away from the criminal justice system and trying to use the resources that we have available to try and um, divert that away from that that system um, and so uh, it's been a pretty busy quarter the um, the one other thing I just want to mention my son um, this past uh, about eight weeks ago sustained a serious eye injury and he's been through multiple surgeries and um, he's been through a lot and I just want to thank people in the community because usually it's me who's supposed to be the person reaching out but this time it's people reaching out to us and I'm very happy um, that you know uh, Rachel Jackson the school nurse and <clears throat> people on his team and schoolmates and just people in the community have been so great to my family during this time and um, in the board as well reaching out asking how things are going so I just want to mention that and really appreciate that I gave you the uh, statistics for the quarter um, our um, as I mentioned mental health uh, continues to be an issue uh, domestic violence um, and uh, we did it we we added in Longview again this month just to give you kind of a um, gauge of how many times we've responded there we have responded there um, I think it says about 378 times this year uh, we've taken reports on 119 incidents and we've had 12 arrests right, those incidents also include some of the community policing activity and the outreach that we do uh, many of them account for um, kids who are AWOL that run that run away this is a perpetual thing with um, with the community down there as far as um, trying to work as a team and trying to be partnership and, and um, you know work with those kids to get them uh, you know to kind of stay in place and everything and um, it's it's an ongoing effort and you know the um, the staff has been receptive the officers have been amazing with uh, their outreach and how they're handling things down there um, it is certainly a tax on the resources um, but it, you know it's still part of our community and it's something that um, that we deal with and we have to deal with and lastly the overdoses um, we are currently at uh, 29 overdoses for the year and uh, unfortunately um, we've had we've had uh, six people to su succumb to those overdoses uh, this year which is which is high we are um, pretty much uh, you know, we haven't really seen improvement this year as far as our overdoses and this is despite the efforts of our department the outreach that we do getting involved in now we have Bay State Recovery our Drug and Alcohol Coalition um, our partnership with Gatehouse um, Recovery up in New Hampshire we're trying to do a lot of different things we're trying to get those resources out there this problem ha is not going away yet and um, it's again one of those perpetual things where we just have to keep uh, doing what we're doing and until it um, subsides so that's all I have Great. thanks chief uh, any questions or comments for the chief uh, yeah. One. Yeah. Uh, thanks John for the for the update um, last we spoke and I can't recall if it was a quarterly update or, or what the situation was but talking about um, Longview and the responses down there over the last few months and your comments about um, you know coordinating more closely or, or maybe reassessing the level of coordination um, people that you're communicating with down there um, from the facility but also possibly at the state level has any of that come to fruition or do you do you did you get the answers you were looking for or yes uh, so we we've um, continued to work with Leslie Suggs who was the she is the um, uh, the secretary basically of the Home for Little Wanderers, which is the umbrella group that oversees Longview. Uh, we've worked, we've uh, met with 
the staff down there at Longview. We've met with DCF, who, you know, DCF, a lot of times the kids are in DCF custody, so they're transferred through there. Uh, and then we also met recently with um, DC Department of Secondary Education, um, who, who basically is a licensing authority. Uh, and so they have been very good. They actually sent out a couple of investigators. So we're now able to, um, th there's like a communication gap, I think, with, with all the different agencies, you know, different state agencies and entities. So we're trying to all um, work together with, with DCF, maybe the DA's office, the police department with DC, um, and try and have everybody kind of talking to each other. And I'll give you an example, um, you know, like the situation with Florida, you know, that, this, that turned out to be a, a human trafficking. We know that it was a human trafficking issue. Um, but there's resources that we can, you know, we can get through DC and through their investigators to help us with situations like that, or even with placement. So when, you know, many times when you see this 12 arrests at, at Longview, that doesn't necessarily mean that we've arrested 12 different kids at Longview. That means, <coughs> that may mean that there's one individual there that's having a difficult time that's a repeat person that we have to keep dealing with. And in, in those instances, DC and other entities can help us maybe Maybe that's not the right fit for this individual and maybe transfer them to somewhere else. And believe it or not, when we, it, it got, it, the, it, the calls increased this quarter significantly. Yeah. And that's really due to clientele. And so yeah. it really depends on who's there yeah. and who's there at the specific time. Um, and so those are the things we have to just keep kind of focusing on. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I mean, and as long as they're being responsive, you know, and, and the communication isn't just coming from you, um, that's that's great. So I appreciate that. Thanks, Ben. All right. David? Chief, thanks very much. Great report as always, and thanks for the great work you and the team are doing. <coughs> and if you, if, if I may, um, I, I know you asked me last time if we could bring uh, Officer Hart and his sidekick Rebel in. <laughs> <laughs> quick introduction. That would be awesome. Uh, and, <laughs> I can't say enough about these two, the, the dynamic duo here. Uh, <laughs> you know, Officer Hart, um, our school, one of our school resource officers, and uh, as you know, we got Rebel from Golden Opportunities for Independence a couple of years ago, and uh, it was a home run. Like, we weren't sure how, how this was all going to work, but um, Tommy and Rebel, as far as our community policing outreach and efforts, um, has absolutely done wonders, uh, and you see the uh, impact that it's had, especially with with kids, social emotional issues in the schools and whatever it might be. We've had documented incident after incident of how um, they've helped turn things around in the community. And, uh, it's great. So I really appreciate everything that these two do. It's awesome. Could we bring Rebel up so uh, get some FaceTime on camera here? Yeah. Like she's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at her. What a beautiful girl. I, I got to do this. <laughs> Good puppy. My favorite was the Officer Hot uh, Halloween costume. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> the khakis and the mud. <laughs> <laughs> no fake outs, right? No. No cross shaking rabbits. Her Halloween costume, I kind of underestimated her size. The teddy bear, but it didn't exactly fit him. Well, I, li I like the uh, young boy that was dressed up as you. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, I think he did a better job than me. So. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. <laughs> take my job pretty soon. <laughs> well, thank, well, thank you, you for all bringing thank her you. Thanks sure. for everything you're doing with her. That's great. Chief, thanks again. All right, uh, next we've got uh, Chief Bailey for the fire department uh, quarterly update. Chief. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, last time I was before you was on September 3rd. Uh, since then, uh, year-to-date, 3,351 emergency calls. We're within 50 of our high for last year uh, with three weeks to go, so um, I don't see that being any lower. Uh, 3,077 inspections and permits, 6,428 calls total for service, or 19.1 calls per day. Uh, we had 13, structure fire, uh, 13 fires in structures uh, since our last meeting, uh, one serious structure fire. Uh, this past week, uh, we had the gas leak over at 767 E Street, which uh, caused some uh, 
chaos uh, in the morning hours uh, it, and to get that rectified. Uh, and as Chief Carmichael mentioned, we had several med flights over the last uh, quarter. Ambulance uh, receipts, uh, I do not have November's numbers, but prior to that, uh, since July, 495,338. Current balance of 1,187,187. 187. 187. Uh, both ambulances are operating at the ALS level and I uh, did the numbers today of the 559 calls they're within three calls of uh, each other so they're basically 50 50 on going out the door so um, budget no issues at this time on the capital front the amb new ambulance has been ordered that was uh, approved at town meeting the brush truck that was uh, approved a year ago is almost complete uh, we're actually going to Pennsylvania. My mechanic's going down tomorrow for a site inspection uh, to make sure that everything's the way it's supposed to be before it's shipped up here. So that should be up here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the boat uh, was in, but when we inspected it, it had been damaged. So they are getting us another one, and that'll be in within with the next couple of weeks. And we're working on the other items of the Capitol, which was the gear, uh, the um, tactical uh, gear, uh, both of those gear issues uh, we're working on currently. Uh, detail billing uh, still is in very good shape. Uh, since we took that over in 2016, uh, we have billed out 431,397. AFG grant, which is the grant that I keep mentioning, uh, the wellness and fitness grant, that has been completed now. We've wrapped that up and uh, we're moving on to the next uh, grant, which will be coming out uh, hopefully shortly and we'll be applying for uh, something at that point we're not sure exactly which way we're going to go with that yet safe grant uh, we've used up the mon money that we had and again we're waiting for the the additional funding to come back in for that we've s applied for that again as we have every year uh, that's a team that visits the schools every year during fire prevention week and they deal with the kindergartners and first graders and teaching them fire prevention and fire safety senior safe uh, that's an ongoing program we still have grant monies available in that program on the fire prevention uh, front, uh, Deputy Barry is still extremely busy with all the uh, building that's going on in town. And as that starts to come to be uh, going from the construction phase to the near occupancy phase, that'll actually go up and his workload will increase significantly uh, with all the inspections that are required. Um, fire alarm, which I don't normally report on, but I will give you a quick update. Uh, we have a lot of double poles in town on Washington C Street specifically, you'll notice there's a lot of double poles that were put in about two to three years ago. All of those have been transferred. We've made them, uh, notified them that those have been transferred from our end, which is a, a key sticking point for them usually in order for them to get those poles out of there so that there's only one left. So uh, we're working on the rest of them, clearing those up uh, throughout town. We have about 168 of those that uh, remain and we're working those uh, pretty diligently as, as time allows. Uh, on the apparatus, the tower ladder is in service. That went into service about three weeks ago. The new engine four, uh, we had hoped to put in service this week, but we're missing a few uh, components and they uh, were shipped out and hopefully that'll be in service next week. Uh, the new brush truck I already mentioned uh, will be in uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, on training, uh, the towel ladder training from the manufacturer was completed as I uh, reported back in September. We're going to wait until the end of the year to see if I didn't have any money left in my budget to try to secure uh, some more training for that on the advanced level. So we'll run the truck for the next couple of months. The guys are very, um, very good at uh, the operation of it now. It's more of a tactical aspect and different things that we can do with it. And we'll wait until the good weather in the spring to try to do that. Also on the training front, uh, we had uh, OEMS, uh, which is our governing body for the ambulance, had some more protocol changes that came out. Those were uh, trained on and implemented on 10-1. Uh, we had four members that went to an EMS for Children Education and Simulation Day at Boston Medical Center. This was an eight-hour hands-on day that they went in there for, which was very beneficial. Uh, we had sexual harassment training for the entire department. New building familiarizations continue uh, as uh, we can get into the structures. Uh, we did meter training with all of our groups, which we carry a bunch of different types of meters uh, for gas emergencies, uh, also for firefighting, for CO, uh, as in residential. Uh, that We did some uh, meter training on that, natural gas and propane training. We had our BLS refresher for all of our EMTs that are EMTs, not medics. We currently still have 11 of us uh, that are at, at that level. 
We had uh, ketamine training, which is again on the, for the EMS uh, folks on the paramedic side. We had high-rise kit and standpipe operations in anticipation for the, um, w what will be required when these new larger structures come online. And we have uh, a whole crew going over tomorrow to Westwood to train at the Fox Hill Village. Uh, they have a vacant building over there that uh, they've invited us over to participate. On the personnel front, uh, firefighter EMT, now paramedic O'Neill, has finished his paramedic and got certified. Uh, he's one of the ones that we hired that was in process at, uh, and that has worked out very well. Injuries, we had three injuries when I was here last time. Two of those injuries have returned, one is still out. We had another firefighter that got injured yesterday, so I'm not sure how long he'll be out, but uh, it doesn't look too serious, but we'll see how that goes and I'll keep the board up to date. And uh, in the community front, we had our open house in October, which was another success, and we participated uh, with the Santa Parade on Saturday. So Take aside from that, not much going on, huh, Chief? <laughs> <laughs> been busy. Yeah, I guess you have been. Any questions or comments for the Chief? Not right now, thanks. Yeah, I, have, I just have two. Um, first off, you know, I saw you down at your open house, yes. and, I, and I brought my son Will down. Um, that was excellent. I really appreciate you doing that. Um, it was fun for him. It was educational. Uh, the place was packed um, for most of the hour that we were there. So that's just fantastic outreach. I think people really enjoyed it. People really appreciated it. Seeing the new um, the new tower truck and all the other new equipment. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and then also. Um, just in reference to your discussions on training, and I know you talked about training last time as well, um, just that, um, you know, I'm very supportive of that. I, I know that the board in general is, but it's so critical to the continued de on ongoing development of all of our personnel. So to the extent that we can support you in that, um, you know, I encourage it. So thank you for those updates. Thank you. Yes. Um, one question for you on uh, the inspections. You, you mentioned that as we move from the build phase to the occupy phase, your inspections are going to go up in volume. Any concerns about being able to keep up with that volume, Chief? Um, I have concerns, but we make it happen. So, I mean, it's it's a time-sensitive issue. Yeah. Uh, we work hand-in-hand -hand with the building department, mm -hmm. and the deputy has to literally go in and we inspect all the sprinkler systems, all the fire alarm systems. He has to go into every unit. Uh, just as the building folks do so it's just time consuming and as long as they don't all come in at the same time we do what we can with it i'll assign extra personnel if i have to so okay. participate myself so well thank you great update as always and again to you and the team thank you for everything you're doing okay. thank you okay. all right uh 7.30, we have a uh, change of manager for Applebee's to Carl Ernest Enberg. Is Mr. Enberg here? Okay. Then we will go without any uh, discussion on the change of manager materials. Oh, it looks good. That was my sense as well. So can I have a motion? I make a motion to approve the change of manager for Applebee's to Carl Ernest Enberg, Jr. I'll second that. Further discussion being none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. No. Four, uh, three, one, zero. Okay, next up we have uh, Marilyn coming to talk to us on the MWRA borrowing request. So, Marilyn. Nice to see you tonight. Thank you, you too. Um, this is the borrowing papers from the MWRA for the um, application we submitted and was approved at the fall town meeting for $159,900. Yeah, $159,500. This is phase 10 of the um, the system, the sewer system projects. Mm -hmm. um, phase 11 will come at another time. They're doing them in sections at this point. So I have some papers that need to be signed. Yeah. And this was Article 13 voted at the most recent uh, town meeting, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, any questions for Marilyn? Nope. Who's the clerk? Okay. So there's a vote that needs to be approved. It can be either read or done as written. 
if you want to just sign it. Okay. Or you can read it. It, it doesn't matter. Do you, do you have a preference on reading it? Well, in saving time, I just as written, I've okay. got counsel that says okay. that it doesn't have to be read. All right, great. Approved as written. Sure. Yeah. That's good, okay. yeah. yeah. I would make a motion um, to approve as written uh, the sale of the $159,500 sewer bond of the town dated December 16, 2019 to Massachusetts Water Resources Authority. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Being none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, four, zero, zero. Do you want me to sign all of these documents, right? Every right, tab? there's four here, there's that one in there. Signing all of all oh, the pages. Did I miss? Yeah, I don't. Well, I don't know. <coughs> Marilyn, are we signing all the all signed, the yeah, yeah, there's, there's four there. So did you say there was a second motion? It looks that way, yeah. Mm. Marilyn, do we do we have a, a second motion? It looks like we do. No, it's usually just the vote. Yeah. Okay. okay. Perfect. As long as we're good. Okay. Um, next up, uh, we had a, a candidate coming and seeking appointment of the pond committee who can't make it tonight, so we'll pick that up at a future date. And um, I guess I'm moving on, but I assume we're, we're all set. Good. Okay. We're all set. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, I think it's worth mentioning, though, that the Ponds Committee has had uh, three members of the committee resign recently. And so uh, we could use some uh, candidates for Ponds Committee. It's a very important uh, committee. So just for the public to know. Okay, we're a little ahead of schedule. Phil, if you don't mind, we'll, we'll go ahead and go with you. So when, next up, we've got uh, Phil Chekarowski uh, seeking a vote from the board to initiate steps for the town to apply for a Massachusetts Green Communities and Grant Program. So Phil's going to take us through what that's all about uh, for a few minutes, and uh, then we'll have some discussion. Just pass it out to everyone just to, if you want to make this call. Uh, is it the end 
Actually, I have a I have the slides I was going to show, and I have. So is that in in addition to? I don't know. The other materials. Yeah, that's okay. correct. Okay. It's, it's a more condensed um, oh, good. version, and it also it, it brings <laughs> us to where we want to go. So first of all, thank, thank you. you. I think he's Apple. turned on the projector, or is he? He's in the process. Oh, oh. Ian, do you want to go grab that from Patrick? Could someone bring that <coughs> remote up from Patrick? Two slides I particularly wanted to show you because they're so uh, they're so compelling. Um, so, so first of all, thank you on behalf of Waffle Green. Um, myself and Jean Duffy were co-chairs of, of Waffle Green. We're a group of citizens who are working very hard to to bring um, Waffle to be more environmentally sound, but also more most importantly to address the. Uh, climate change and reduce our energy consumption. And that's all in keeping with the, the Massachusetts uh, uh, Global Warming Solutions Act, which we're, you know, we, we as many, every other town in Massachusetts have an obligation to, to help meet that. So, first of all, I just want to acknowledge how much Walpole has already done. I won't go through all of this, but, but Walpole has really taken the lead in many areas. Um, Walpole passed a very important resolution in 2016, as did the Board of Selectmen, to oppose the, the gas pipeline. That was a major step going forward. And then at the last town meeting, Walpole <coughs> Town Meeting passed a resolution with setting a, it's a non-binding resolution, setting a goal to be 100% renewable energy at the municipal level by 2050. And again, that was just aspirational. And then, but, but for more concrete things, Walpole has taken the lead, the, uh, the, the, the photovoltaic district. We, we have three large um, farms, which is actually yielding a considerable amount of income to the town. That's, a, that's, a, that's actually more than lots of towns have done. Uh, the library is lead as a gold lead building. And you know, also the, uh, the fact that we're offering the, the, the choice green. So, so I just want to acknowledge that because we do, we do appreciate the fact that you know, the, the Walpole's leadership is is coming forth and doing what, what we can do as a town to, to address climate change, but also to save money for the town. So being energy efficient is, 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 is saves money for, the, you know, for, our, for our own town. So what we're asking for tonight is to take the first step to pass um, an article that would, that would accept the stretch building code, and that's one of the five criteria that's needed in order for Walpole to become a green community or to be accepted into the green communities program. And the reason why we're asking you to do the building code tonight is because the, 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 you can, a towns can only apply once a year to become a green community. So the next, next time is November. So if we don't do something now to, to, get, to stage the requirements, the criteria for November, then we'd be another year away. And I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes why that's such a benefit to Walpole. So the, the stretch building code requires a resolution at town meeting, um, I'm sorry, an article at town meeting, uh, 50, it's, it's, a, it's majority, not a, not a two-thirds vote. And it would be, it, we feel that's the long pole, if you will, to getting, getting to, to, to the, uh, the applying as the green communities. So the, Green Communities Program, which is offered by the state of Massachusetts, um, it offers significant revenue to the town when you get accepted. There are five criteria that the town has to accept. And uh, the first one is, is uh, uh, has to have as of right siting for renewable energy, alternate energy generation. And also the second one, have an adopt an expedited 12 month application permitting process. We believe, and we're confirming this with Lisa Sullivan, who's the Southeast Coordinator, that our overlay district for the photovoltaic um, complies to these first two. 
So our understanding is that we've, we've already ex uh, have reached, have accomplished both of those, although again, we need to confirm that. And I talked to Lisa, Jean has talked to Lisa a couple times, and she's gonna look over our, our zoning bylaws and, and the overlay district definition just to confirm that with people on the state side. The, and the on that point, uh, my, when I, as I read through these, uh, you, and you gave us quite a homework assignment, I have yeah, to say, Yeah, pardon me on that, yep. Uh, <laughs> but as I read through it, um, my reading of the zoning thing, the number two, was it's, it's not so much adopt an expedited 12-month process, but it's that there's nothing that would interfere with a 12-month process being accomplished. That, that, that is correct. Is that, that right? Yeah, okay. That, yeah, and, we, and we just need uh, legal counsel to, uh, to yeah. att um, attest to that. Okay. That's just a letter from our legal counsel saying that. that that's absolutely correct. All right, though, thank you. Yep. Okay. Then the third one is to establish an energy use baseline with a plan to reduce the, the baseline by 20% over five years. And, and I know talking to Jim, you know, there, he's already doing a lot of monitoring of what our energy usage is. And this is actually a good, a good objective that we would probably want to do anyways. So that, and, and by the way, there's, there's funding available to do this. And there's also tools that the state offers, and there's a number, number of options for that. And then four is purchasing fuel efficient vehicles, but only where, where it's, it's practical and where it makes sense. So for example, uh, emergency vehicles are, are, are exempt. Large tr trucks are exempt. So there's, there's quite a range of exemptions. And, and what's considered now energy efficient is not, is not electric. It's really, they, they have miles per gallon. So it's, it's, it's like 20 to 24 miles per gallon. So a lot of vehicles that we have probably already fit in that category just because the, the car manufacturers have gotten more efficient. And then the last one, and this is the one with the, uh, the building, you know, accepting the, 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 the stretch building code, is that the town has to accept that. And for us, it would be accepting it at town meeting. So this came before the town some number of years ago. I couldn't remember exactly what year, Jim, you may you may remember. Uh, I'd say seven to nine years ago. ago. Yeah, so it was quite a while ago. But, but what's, what's happened since that time is two things. One, the base building code has, has moved up. So the difference between the base code and the stretch code is a lot smaller. And second, before, the, the stretch code was very prescriptive. It told exactly what a developer had to do for windows or insulation. Now it uses something called HEARS, which is Home Energy Rating System. So it sets a, a number of how, how efficient a house has to be. And the developer has full, full control over what they do to reach that. So, so they, don't, they're not, they don't have to do any particular thing as long as they reach that number. And in fact, the major cost to, be co to, to becoming, um, to meeting the, the zoning, the, the, the stretch code, is paying for a consultant who actually does the, 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 the rating. And that, it's not exorbitant by any means. And we're gonna show in a couple of minutes that, that, that the state has eight sample, example houses of different types and it shows what the payback period is. And it, it's, and within two or three years, the homeowner act is actually getting significant money back because the cost of getting there is, is, is fairly, fairly low. So um, the benefits, I, I won't go, I, I'm going to try to go a little fast, but if you, so I won't go through all these things. But, but certainly the big one is getting a, a community grants, so getting grants from the state. But it also is a good way to promote more efficient energy in the town, not just among town departments, but also to the, to the population as a whole. It's a good example to set. And it increases the messages that, that the town is making to the population, to our residents, that they should be more you know, aware of en being energy efficient and the, des the decisions they can make that can, can get us there. Um, so the, the first thing that we're gonna see as far as if we became a green community is that they give a designated grant. And that grant, when you get accepted to the program, starts off at 125,000 and then it, it, it goes up depending on your population. And when we talked to the last, um, the, the, the prior, Southeast coordinator, um, he was estimating between 150 and 175,000. So again, that, that would be something that, that Lisa would, would, would confirm. And then after that, each year, 
towns can apply for what they call competitive grants. And, and you're going to see that Westwood, who's been in the program since tw uh, 2012, has got a total of $1.2 million through these grants. So, so there is a fair amount of opportunity here to get a couple hundred thousand dollars per year. So what can the money be used for? It can be used for retrofitting buildings, for studying, doing evaluations. Um, it can be used for, for setting policies. The one thing it can't be set for is to build a new building. But it's, it's, so it's all around making buildings that you already have more efficient. But it's fairly, fairly lenient. And you, you'll see if you look at the example of the, the grants that are given, it's, it's very wide open what, what towns have. Uh, so so have when, when I was going through that part, one thought that came into my head is, you know, we've got the, the, uh, the old town hall, the townhouse. Yep. And one of the questions we have about that is weather tie, winterizing, heat, all that kind of stuff. Would, would any of these grants be applicable to <coughs> that kind of activity? Any grant in the Green Communities Act could be used for that, because that's retrofitting the existing building. So any, and the you know, whether it be a new heating system, right. uh, windows, insulation, mm -hmm. um, tightening up the building, doors, so all, all of those would fall under this, this grant system. Thanks. So it's very, very flexible. Um, and, and it also can be used to help manage the, 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 the project, although a lot of towns <coughs> don't use it for that, but that's another, another option. I think it's up to 10%. So this is uh, an example. This is the grants that were from 2019. I know you're not going to be able to read that, but, but it, it, it just gives a, a range of some of, the, some of the, uh, um, the, what some of the towns are doing. And, and this, you, one of the interesting ones that you might be interested in is um, some towns are, have purchased the electric street lights, the, you know, the, the street lights from, say, Eversource, and then use the grant money to install LED lights, and then actually save a bundle of money because electrical cost is so low. Mm -hmm. Because the utility companies don't have an incentive to replace all the street lights with LEDs. But if we own the lights, we would have a, so, so that, you, there's actually a couple places where you see that towns have done that. Um, lighting is, is a big one because certainly that's one of the, the easiest way to, to save electricity with LED lights. But insulation, um, a, there's a lot of grants been given out for, for the heating systems. And you know, the heating systems are a lot more efficient than they were you know, 5, 10, particularly any, you, know, you go beyond that age. And then I mentioned Westwood. These are the grants that Westwood was, was granted since 2012. And um, it, it adds up to about $1.2 million. So they, they've been you know, very, very aggressive in, in applying. So what's interesting about the Green Communities Program, this is one reason why we feel really it's important for, for WAPO to take this step now, is that we're way behind in, in thinking about applying for this. So right now there are uh, 240 towns in, in who've been accepted. There are 30 more that will probably be accepted by in February. That they've, they've, they've applied in November, and there'll be, probably all of them will be accepted in November. So we're talking about 270 towns out of 351. And if you look at the map, you'll see where Walpo is. We're, we're fairly surrounded, except for the, to the southern part there, but to the, the east and the north and the west, we're pretty, uh, I think this will show. Anyways, um, to all the towns are around us. And, and in the next slide, this shows you the towns that have adopted the stretch code. And you see here, even more towns around us have, have accepted the stretch code. And that's why you know, some, some developers will, will, are worried, they're concerned, well, we won't be competitive in Walpole if we have a more stringent building code. But if all the towns around us have to do the same thing, then it's really a non-issue, and, that, and that's what I really believe. It's, it's not going to be, um, be a problem. So, so it's 278 municipalities right now have adopted the, the stretch code. And as I said, there are eight examples on the, the Mass Green Communities webpage, and I, I tried to put a lot of the, the pages in there, but the, there's a, just a wealth of information on their, their webpage. Um, but the eight examples show Different, different buildings. So this is a house, oil, heat, um, 2,500 square feet. Um, it was in uh, Worcester. And this shows you the additional cost by, by following the stretch code. 
and then how the that's offset. Um, one, it's offset by rebates, which which are, you know, if, if you just get a better heating system, then you're going to get a rebate. And then there's a positive cash flow because you're saving. They're saving on their their utility bills. So so the the total cost was about four four thousand. And again, a lot of that was for the the uh, the, the air hairs consultant company that has to come in and do the testing. Um, and then the actual cost compared to the base code was just 2,400. And you can see with the, the, the year one cash flow of 282 that went to year two, uh, five over $500 per year. It doesn't take long to pay that back. And then the next slide shows you what they did compared to the base code. And, and one thing that's very interesting here is that you'll see with the, the bottom part, floors, walls, lighting, that there was no change because that's because the base code and the stretch code are the same. In other words, they didn't have to do anything more for the for those for those things because it's, the, the codes are very similar. They 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 could get those efficiencies through the the top things, which is the the more efficient uh, oil furnace, the um, air conditioning, and and so forth. So this is just a you know one example showing you know that the costs are very reasonable. So what we would, what we're recommending, and, and we know that, that you know, the, there's a lot of steps to becoming a green, a green communities, but we, we think it's really important that we take this first step and get on the, the town war, the acceptance of the, the stretch building code. And what, what, we th what we're recommending first is that, that Lisa Sullivan, who's the Green Communities Coordinator for the Southeast Region, she's willing to come in and present to, to, the, to the, the select board. Um, she's also willing to help us host um, some um, sessions for the public and answer questions, and that could be done in many ways. So having pu public forums. Then there's a, and, and Wapo Green, we're willing to help whatever we can in, in, in spreading the, 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 the message, documenting things, or, or doing publicity. So any, any way we can help, we are very open to that. Um, there's a lot of additional information on their web pages. So, so certainly, as we go forward, you are going to want to study this more. The, you know, Jim, the, the town departments, we want to know more of what the impact is going to be. Uh, but we don't believe that should stop us from at least doing this first step. And then last, we, we're asking you to be the ones to sponsor the article for the spring town meeting war. And if, if you don't feel you can do it, and, and you know, again, we don't want to put an undue pressure on you, but we, we're, we feel so compelled that we need to move this forward. So th our citizens group, would then, we, would, we would then do a citizen's petition to put it on the, on the war. But we must prefer this to come from the, from the, the select board and from the town. Okay, well, thank you, Phil. I appreciate the, uh, the presentation. Questions for Phil? And Jean. Angie. <laughs> Sorry, Jean. So, I, I, I mean, I, I think the stretch code is kind of a no-brainer from my point of view. Um, I guess I would like to see the Board of Selectmen um, propose that. You know, again, I can only speak for myself. Um, you know, some of the other things that you mentioned are pretty interesting as you go forward. And certainly I'd love to see maybe in a workshop setting some more discussion on some of those topics and how they actually, you know, it, it sounds like we are a little behind some of the other towns, but find out more about what the other towns actually did, what do the numbers look like. I mean, it looks like we can save money with this um, at a fairly good pace. So in addition to everything else you said, I, I, I'm sort of zeroing in on the money piece, but it would be great if we could get some people who have been through this uh, to talk us through some of those things. I wouldn't do it at a regular Board of Selectmen meeting just because we're usually very tight time-wise, but maybe in a workshop setting and invite some of the other boards to come in and uh, interested parties to kind of get involved and see what's happening. And Jean has talked to... I, I've talked to um, uh, Westwood's energy manager, and he's um, very experienced, um, very skilled, and he saved the town significant money. I think you've seen some of the projects that they've um, yeah. done, and, and you haven't seen the solar that they've done. He's willing to talk to anyone. And that's exactly what I'd like to see us do, is talk to the people that have really done it and get our people involved <coughs> and 
you know, learn more about it, make a, a conscious decision to move forward, you know, assuming we do, with everybody sort of on board, so. But we haven't done, because not in all cases has that been given to us, is we, we've given you what the Green Community Grant was, uh, what any utility incentives were, what the town paid, but we didn't give you the savings as a result of it. And I noticed that as we're going through. Uh, but as you talk to these people, and I've spoken to about 10 energy people in various towns, they can tell you that. They can tell you that. And you also mentioned getting somebody from another town to speak with us. That, that's really where we can build a comfort factor with you know, the ideas that we're talking about. So that'd be great. Thanks, Mark. Ben? Yeah, and I think, <coughs> I guess first of all, thank you for coming in and, and doing this, giving this presentation, putting all this information together. I think so often um, people and in, in even residents of Walpole, their questions uh, or their concerns, I should say, are driven by the, all of the questions they have and the lack of information. Um, so I think it's incredibly informative to understand what has already been done in Walpole um, to be green and how far along the town already is on the criteria for approval uh, to enter into the program and the ability to get the monies to, to perform these projects. And I know that one of the um, shortfalls, if there is a shortfall in some of the new building construction that we've done, is the fact that it isn't green and that um, in an effort to be uh, efficient with costs, in an effort to be reasonable uh, at town meeting and understanding with taxpayers, there were items that were cut from those projects, that it would be great to be able to go back now, get the money through this program and, and be able to perform that. Um, it, would be, it would be huge and it would make a lot of difference. It would save a lot of money, as you said. So um, I think it's, it's fantastic. I would be in favor of the board, um, certainly sponsoring the article on the stretch building code. Um, and I had reached out myself to a handful of developers in the region that, that I know I've been friendly with. And they all said the same thing, which was um, not only is it not a showstopper when it comes to development, but they've actually found ways to work within it and even go beyond it and make more money. And, and so that's to the benefit of the towns, the benefit of, of the residents, the homeowners, and the developers. So um, there's, there's a lot of positives here. So thank you again for bringing this forward. David? Yeah, a couple of things. I mean, the added price to construction doesn't seem very high, and nowadays it seems like something that buyers are actually looking for, to see that in their, in their houses when they're buying them. So I, I think it could be a, a bonus to a, a someone uh, selling those houses. Um, also, looking at the grants programs, um, many of the grants are for new street lighting. We had the chief in here earlier saying the more pedestrian accidents. Um, I know one of them was in the evening over out near uh, uh, um, Tessie's place. So better lighting on the streets if we could use that money for that. Um, and I know it's at least some of the schools need new boilers, so some of that money can be used through that. So I, I, I don't see it. Um, I see this as a pretty good program. Appreciate you bringing it forward. Jim, one of the, sure, I, and I, I don't want to put Jim on the spot here, but has there been any feedback or, or um, <clears throat> any feedback really from you or from any of the town personnel on this? Um, positive, negative, ambivalent? No, uh, not really. Bill okay. and I spoke this afternoon and I had a brief conversation with the building commissioner, Mike Yanovich. That's why I have him sitting out in the audience here. And my initial thought was, well, what's is there much of a difference now between the current uh, nationally accepted building codes, what, what Mike adheres to, versus the stretch code? And quite honestly, Mike brought me up to speed that no, there's not much of a yeah. difference right there. Um, I'm, I think it, I, I agree with Mark as far as the stretch code. My concern is the cost associated with the green communities, but that's something that, that you don't have to go to the green communities. We can go to the stretch code, and then the board can decide what you want to do if you want to grow, go to the green community. So. Okay. Yeah, so my, my, my take on it is uh, I think it's a good idea. Uh, you and I chatted a couple times about this over the last couple of months, Phil, and I've encouraged you to bring it forth, and I think it's a very good idea. 
and nothing that I've heard or read, again, thanks for the homework assignment, nothing I've heard or read has caused me to think anything different. I will say that I would be very interested in doing a workshop so that we could get really smart about this. Um, there is a lot of stuff here, and so I, I would like to do take that step, but again, I, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be willing to spot, or at least speaking for me, willing to sponsor the article that, as you're suggesting it, and then let's get the follow through. I think the trick to this kind of thing is engagement, in getting people educated on what it is and what it isn't, so that when we get to the point of town meeting, a lot of that discussion has already taken place and we're not educating people on the floor of town meeting. So I think that would be the, the real trick now is to say, how do we get that process going? How do we do the community outreach? How do we make sure that we're uh, talking to people that have done it before? You know, can we talk about, you know, you mentioned Westwood had some significant benefits. What, what exactly is that? And, and, and let's use that as part of the, the education, you know, uh, you know ex experience. So, so I'm, I'm very supportive of it and thank you very much for bringing it forward. Thank you so, for your support. Yeah, of course. And like I said, we're very willing to help in any way as far as public outreach, uh, arranging meetings. Um, we also have a number of other suggestions that I wasn't going to go into tonight, but that would be another time. Okay. That, might, that I think that would be appropriate at the workshop. Yeah. We're, we're seeing what other towns have done in conjunction with this to make it really work. Right. And that, that's also good to know. There's really, a, I, th I think it's really a good opportunity for Walpole to uh, to take a lead and you know, not only help our climate issues, but also reduce our cost. Yeah, for example, to both, our residents. Both are worthwhile things to do. So, yeah, so again, thank you. Um, anybody want to make a motion? I would make a motion to initiate the steps for the town to apply to the Mass Green Communities and Grant Program. So, could, could I suggest we take a step away from that. That's sort of the big, bold vision. I, I would make a motion that we would, uh, the, the Board of Selectmen would sponsor an article for the stretch code at the next town meeting. Didn't mean to cut you off there, Ben. Sorry. No, no. <laughs> so Ben, you were there first. Um, what are your thoughts on what Mark just suggested? Um, Yeah, I don't see why we can't do both. And hey Mark, what's your concern about doing both? I don't know what the other steps are. That, that's sort of the whole workshop thing to me. Is, it's no, it's a no-brainer to do stretch, and I'd love to see a workshop or two to talk about all of the other issues. Yeah. So that when we make another motion to go forward with something else, we really know what it is. And, and I understand you give us a lot of info, and I went out to a few of those links, but... Um, to me, that's sort of the big picture. And Again, just speaking for myself. Yeah, what you're really after today is getting uh, support of the warrant article. Yes, right? we, we think that's the, the, yeah. the going to be the biggest time frame issue. So if we get that yeah. in the spring, you know, the springtown meeting, <clears throat> there's more time to do the other things. We're, we're certainly in favor of doing the whole thing now. Right. But, well, but, I think uh, you're hearing a lot of support on the board to do it, but I also think yeah. you're hearing that there are questions, right? Yeah. And so, and so those could be addressed through the, the workshops. The highest priority yeah. is, is the stretch code because we it'd be good to get that on the spring time warrant and get it done with. If it was on the fall time warrant that gets very close to the application date, and they really frown upon that. No, I think we should go for the, yeah, the spring so town meeting. Yeah. And the application process, there's a bit to it also. So yeah. you know, even if it was a close date, still to go through that application process right. to be Right, okay, makes sense. So, Ben, are you okay with uh, going forward with the warrant article sponsorship? So the application to the Green Communities and Grant Program would take place November of 2020. It'd be, it'd be, so yeah, the application is put in October and the end date is, is November to get everything in. I think okay. it's early October. October. It's, it's so in, October. in terms yeah, of the October. steps, in terms of steps, so, so just that's that's the earliest we could do it right now. We we've missed the net 20, right. 2019 date. Right, right. So in terms of steps, we would yeah. do spring town meeting warrant stretch, and then at a meeting after that, should that pass, we could then undertake the uh, application of the green communities and grant program. But and that wouldn't leave us with any deficit of time to do it in May rather than starting now. 
Say, ask again. The, if we voted now just to go to Springtown meeting with the stretch code, and we waited until some other point in 2020 to initiate the steps to apply to the Green Communities Grant Program. Are we leaving ourselves too small a window? Um, no, as long as, as long as criteria one and two we've already met, then nothing else has to go to, to read town meeting to change something. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we should be, that all that can be done internally within the town okay. administration. Okay, yeah, I mean. And, and select board, so. And the application process is out on the Green Community website. Yeah. Um, good news about coming in at this stage in the process is so many people have been ahead of us, so there's all these best practices out there. Mm -hmm. There's how to go about the application process. So there's really a lot of help for yeah. you. Yeah. And if, you, if, you, if, you get, if we do it in, I think be, this year it was October 6th, they will actually review your application ahead of time <coughs> to make sure it meets all the requirements before you actually submit it. You know, they, they will help you get there. Um, yeah. So, but to answer your question, Ben, yes, the, if we if we do the the big one is the town meeting for, for the the stretch code. After that, we should be able to fit everything in yeah. over the over okay. the course of the year with All no right. no other uh, timeline issues. Okay. Yeah. Well, if if people would desire to have this workshop before voting on that, then and it won't leave us short of time, then I don't see why not. I, I would prefer that yeah. if, if if you sure. don't mind. Sure. Yeah, I'd prefer that. But I'm also happy to see that workshop happen early in the year. Let's not wait till yeah, September. Let's let's maybe we can schedule. schedule that in, in yeah, I, I late January, should, early February. If the, the town should keep moving on this. Right. Yeah. We shouldn't yep. wait till May or June or so shoot for know, January. Get, get, yeah. Yeah. See if we can get it done in January. Yeah. And we can help do that if you want or whatever whatever that whatever you'd like it to be or not, you know, for us. But uh, Yeah, sure. David. And do we know that the, we don't need anything further for the expediting expedited p permitting part or do we so we're going to send to lisa our, our zoning bylaw uh, the map of our our uh, 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 yeah, Botea, yeah our solar um, overlay district okay and she's going to have her land people take a look at that and get back to us okay and, and the if, they're, if they're good with it and she she thinks it is but we just want to make sure and if that came back not then we would we would figure it out but i Everybody, I think, is pretty optimistic about that. When does the warrant close? Uh, January 26th. Okay. Uh, last, uh, last meeting in January. Yeah. So just so. We're looking to get that answer within a week. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Okay. So do I have to retract my motion because I went beforehand? <laughs> How does that work? Yeah. I think if you just make another motion, we'll be fine. Okay. Well, Mark made a motion. All right. So. Um, and you're okay with this motion? Yes. Okay. I'll second Mark's motion then. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Four zero zero. Well done. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. Look forward to working with you on this. Okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to mention that that on the uh, community webpage they have the sample text for the article. So they, you know, so they've done yeah. it. Yeah. That's all there. So. Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Very helpful. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, and, and Jim may reach back to you on when that warrant article is starting to be written up. So, and we're, like I said, we're willing to do anything we can to. Okay. You know, to Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, that concludes our appointments for this evening after 8 o'clock, so we'll go to open forum next. Is there anybody here who is interested in speaking at open forum? Okay, nobody, so we'll move on to new business. And we have uh, several votes to, to make under new business. Thank you. Sure. Sorry. Good night. Yeah, you don't have to stay for the rest of the meeting. No, I was going to write warrant language on top you want to sure. lead us through the votes? All right. So we make a motion to renew the wine and malt package store licenses as listed in documents 12-5. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Vote to abstain, 4 zero, zero. I would make a motion to renew the all alcohol package store licenses for these establishments listed in document 12-6. I'll second that. 
All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Four zero zero. I'd make a motion to renew the all alcohol common victuals licenses for these establishments listed in document 12 7. I'll second that. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Four zero zero. I would make a motion to renew the wine and malt common victuallers licenses for these establishments in document 12 8. I'll second that. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Four zero zero. I would make a motion to renew the all alcohol common victuallers club licenses for those establishments listed in document 12 9. I'll second that. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Four zero zero. Make a motion to renew the Sunday entertainment licenses for those establishments listed in document 12 10. I'll second that. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. 400. Zero, zero. Okay, that knocks out the uh, new business. Nothing under roll of business. We've now got the consent agenda. David, do you want to take us through that? No, I'm all set. You're all set. Okay, Ben. I'd make a motion uh, to accept. With thanks, the following gifts. Anonymous gift to COA, $5,000. John and Eunice Morrison Foundation gift to COA of $5,000. I'll second that. All in favor, please say aye. Four aye. Zero, zero. Those are two tremendous donations to the COA. Thank you to, uh, to both of the donors. All right, we're on to the town administrator's update now. Jim. Okay, a few things here. Um, a couple weeks ago, you, you guys talked about the 300th anniversary, so I took a, I took a look at what, what some other towns do with some anniversaries. Um, I just did a quick search online. So I looked at Plymouth, which is very extensive. They had legislation established. Obviously, that's a lot bigger. They have 31 board members, four associate members, eight honorary members, and five full-time staff members. So I don't think we're looking to do something that extensive. But their charge, their website's there. Just kind of the committee makeup. Bellingham did something f uh, back in 2019 for their, they didn't have a mission online. Um, Hopkinton did something for their 300. I listed out their committee. Uh, Watley, 250, a lot smaller obviously, but kind of the same idea. They're coming up in 2021. They got six members, they call it a steering committee. They have a charge there. Uh, Holden did something back in 2016 with six members. Uh, for the 275th celebration. So what I did is just some comments on this. Um, I'd suggest the board have five to seven members on that committee. I know a lot of people probably want to be on it, but we don't want to have it too big to kind of hinder the, the committee's progress and, and meeting expectations. I drafted a charge um, which reads as follow. I called it Walpole 300. Walpole 300 is charged with planning, coordinating, preparing, and recommending to the Board of Selectmen a program. It actually will be uh, select board so I'll change that uh, a program of celebrations to commence commensurate uh, Walpole's 300th anniversary in 2024 which incorporates the ideas the ideals of the citizens of Walpole to implement recommendations approved by the Board of Selectmen Walpole 300 will develop a celebratory plan including a timeline for celebration proposed events publicity plan volunteer roster funding requirements funding sources and oversight of festivities the committee will coordinate with other entities within town government, including police chief, fire chief, town administrator, historical commission, school department, etc., to ensure the broadest possible inclusion of areas in participation. The committee will endeavor to engage the entire community in the planning process and beyond. So that's just a draft. Um, I'd like some feedback from you folks as to, you know, do you, do you like it? Do you want to make some changes? Because um, I think the, what my takeaway from the board a few weeks ago was that you want to get moving on this and form something within the next couple of months. So um, take any feedback you may have on this. So um, you went through that kind of quickly. Did you have provisions in there for, you know, identifying any funding needs that might require town meeting approval, that kind of thing? Not at this time, but I, we can certainly add that in there. Was you know, I, I, I think it's one of the reasons that it's important to get going on this now is because, you know, 2024 is the 300th. But if if we are looking to, and, and of course it would be up to the committee to figure this out, but if we're looking to do anything that's going to cost money, we're, we're going to want to go through a couple of budgeting cycles. So we put a piece here and a piece there so we can tee up, a, you know, a, a budget for the 300th committee as we get into you know, the 2023-24 timeline. 
And so I think it's important to call that out only because I would like the committee to realize that or to understand that that's something we're looking for for input so that we can incorporate into the budgeting process. Does that make sense? Sure. I can certainly add something. Some, just some kind of reference. Identify funding needs that may be required via town meeting appropriation. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other comments for Jim? I do kind of like the idea that Plymouth had 48 people working on it. But, uh, <laughs> I think that's a little too much for us. So I, I like your idea, Jim. Around six people, I think, would be a great way to go. And then there could certainly be other people who are involved in, you know, aspects of it. So I think it would be great. Well, if you, if you remember back to that stuff Ted Hagler sent to us, they had, they had a number of committees yep. that were involved. Plus they engaged existing committees, like the Historical Commission. So you'd, you sort of expect that we would engage, you know, broadly in the town. But maybe another thing that we should include in the charge is that if there's a need for some form of subcommittee, that we, you know, we could incorporate that in there as well and, and have that committee come back and establish that. Okay. Okay. So if you guys could maybe look this over next week or so, give me your comments. And sure. Great. I'll have a revised draft next week and I'll send it out with your weekly updates too, Great. just to remind you. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, a couple other things. Uh, MSBA, um, just uh, attached here a, a timeline. Um, with some important dates coming up uh, for the MSBA program. Uh, most important dates coming up uh, recently uh, over the next couple of weeks is the OPM Selection Committee. Uh, the bids are due in, the, the proposals are actually due on December 19th. The Selection Committee is going to make a recommendation to me by December 23rd. I know that's a very tight time window, but we're um, following the MSBA guidelines on this to ensure that we're on their February agenda. So I'm hoping either December 26th or the 27th to meet with the uh, top uh, firm, negotiate a price with them, and then get the building committee to um, choose that uh, committee. So we're progressing with this. It's just a, a tight time window right now. Has the, um, I remember we, we formed a committee, but we, it wasn't going to really formally meet until after the they've feasibility few, uh, study. I think they've met twice, David? Yeah. 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 And any, anything to report out of that, David? Just basically, we selected the subcommittee. I, um, I'm on the subcommittee to select the um, the contractor. Um, OPM. OPM contractor. Um, that's basically the tasks for the moment. Okay. So that the, there's a series of meetings already set up to, to complete that task. And okay. we'll be on track when we get that completed. Great. Okay. Thanks, David. Uh, just uh, one or two other things. <clears throat> Deputy Police Chief uh, interview process. The Chief mentioned that um, during his updates. Um, the assessment center was conducted this week. Um, we anticipate that they're going to have the candidates ranked within the next uh, few days, um, hopefully by tomorrow, actually. Um, I'd like the, the Board of Selectmen in some way to meet informally with the top three candidates so you can get to know them a little bit better before formally bringing them before the Board of Selectmen. Um, and I don't want to have any uh, open meeting law violations or anything. So would the board be interested in doing something like uh, a two and two, um, you know, round robin type of thing? So two of you can meet with one candidate, two of you meet with another and kind of rotate. And um, does that sound acceptable to you guys? Sounds good to me. Yeah, that'd be yeah, really good. good. And then maybe we can bring a top candidate forward um, uh, either the for the last meeting in December or first meeting in January, so we'll achieve some help there. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Good. Um, select board update. Um, I know we briefly haven't talked about that in a while. Council's working on the draft language um, for the um, for the board to consider so we can submit it to the state. Uh, so I'm hoping that we'll have some draft language for you um, at your next meeting so we can uh, make sure that process keeps moving there. And uh, that's about it. Great. Any questions for Jim? Okay. Yeah, one question. Uh, the, um, what did we talk about at the last meeting? There was one other item that you had discussed. Oh, mass housing on Cedar Street, uh, South Street. <coughs> yes. Did you hear anything? No, MD? they haven't approved it yet. Um, yeah. They haven't sent us any notification. Um, and we're just waiting on them. Uh, there's some unanswered questions, obviously, there uh, as part of our letter that we've yeah. raised, so we yeah. haven't heard anything. No, nothing new. 
Any other questions or comments for Jim? Hey, um, before we move on to the minutes, um, I meant to have this put on uh, the agenda today. I hope that we can just sort of cover it quickly. But we had the 2020 Census Complete Count Committee presentation some weeks ago. And I think they're still looking for one of us to be on <coughs> the committee. I don't know if anybody has thought about that or be willing to, to serve on it or not, but I thought I'd bring it back up. And I think we need to let them know by sometime in January, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, if no one else is, I'm happy to just put my name out there and do it. So uh, I think it's important that we be represented. So um, I, I don't know how what we need to do, but if uh, but I'm happy to step up and do that. So I don't know. We need to notify, but. Is everyone else okay? And I'll let Liz know that Jim's going to be the board's representative on there. Yeah, I'd be good with I that. Mean, if there's someone else who really wants to do it, I'm happy to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let Liz know. I'll, I'll let thank you. Okay. okay, thank you. So we have uh, minutes now uh, of October 15th, 2019. Can I have a motion? So I'll make a motion to approve uh, the meeting minutes of October 15th, 2019. I'll second that. Any discussion? Being none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Four zero zero. I would make a motion to approve the minutes of October 21st, 2019. I'll second that. Any discussion? Being none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. Four zero zero. I would make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of November 5th, 2019. I'll second that. Any discussion? Being none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Four zero zero. That concludes our agenda for, uh, for this evening, and uh, thank you all for being with us tonight. And Patrick, thank you for your help as always. And with that, good night, everyone.